on Google Meet. Now, to anyone who wants to be part of Google uh, to, of the Google session, you can actually just join uh, my Telegram channel if you're on TikTok and you want to stream this particular session on uh, on Google Meet. You make a link in my TikTok bio that you can actually click. It's going to direct you to my Telegram channel where you're going to find a link to join the session. So I think was in your core TikTok. This is my Telegram channel. All right, this is my Telegram channel over here that uh, will guide you. You can, it's going to give you a guide. So, sorry, click up you So this is my, the session. You can actually just join my Telegram channel and then you click on this particular link over here. All right, it will directly to the Google Meet session and you'll have to automatically join. So I believe you are, we are a good number to start. Eh? And uh, now we are talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. All right. But now it's it, artificial intelligence and machine learning e is a very, very broad topic. In fact, discussing it is going to take a long, long time. But today, what I'm going to give you is some foundational knowledge on what it entails to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. I will not cover everything. I will not cover everything, yes. But at least by the end of uh, the next maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes, we are at 8.04 p.m. And uh, Onesmas, Uko, Onesmas is my very good uh, business. Onesmas? Yes, sir. Uko? Niko kabisa. Niyeza bie matha. Ikifika by 8.35 p.m. Sawa. Unishtue bana, unishtue bana. So that we can have a good, good session. Now, this session, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, I want to ask this very simple question. Of all the guys who are here in the in the Google Meet session, who can define or try and explain artificial intelligence? You can raise your hand up if you can if you can define what artificial intelligence is. Okay. As we wait for people to raise their hands, I just want to bring you to notice we have uh, night sessions. Uh, in a night school I've, I've, i think most of you guys have seen me talk about it now uh starting on the starting the 11th of uh, february 2024 we will be having night se night sessions we'll be talking about uh, computer literacy and digital literacy this one is actually going to be a very very good program we will be getting instruction on computer literacy we'll get to understand practical skills on vitukama google workspace adobe suit that is Adobe software. We'll also understand cybersecurity. We'll also get to understand communication and collaboration tools. We will also learn how to write emails. At the same time, we'll also get to understand digital literacy. So first things first is computer literacy. We'll introduce, we'll introduce the basics to computers, that is computer packages, peer to tongue about operating systems. We'll talk about the various operating systems that exist. We'll also talk about software and hardware. Now, in the computer packages, uh, we'll be talking about Google Docs. Google Docs, I think a good number of you know it. Uh, we will also talk about Google Sheets, peer to talk about Google Slides. We'll also talk about Gmail. We'll also talk about Google Calendar for scheduling and task management. We'll also get to dive into Google Drive for cloud storage and file management. At the same time, we'll also get to talk about Adobe Photoshop. We'll also talk about Adobe Illustrator. Now, finally, we will also talk about Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing purposes. We to Tangania Pia web browsers. We'll also look at antivirus and security software. We'll also talk about collaboration and communication tools, including Google Meet, Zoom, Slack, and Microsoft Teams. At the same time, to turn into email communication, we know how to write emails properly. We'll delve into typing skills. Pia will ju just try and understand how you as a person can improve your typing skills. Okay, about digital literacy, we'll talk about a few skills. Again, we'll have a session. The session is going to be about online writing and the various ways that you can actually monetize online writing as a person who is creative. Then we'll also delve into video editing to talk about video editing. We'll also get to talk about graphic design. We'll talk about digital marketing. I'll have specialists in the space to talk about all these particular fundamentals. We get to talk about web development and design. So you're very, very much welcome to be part of the sessions. Uh, we currently have 150 individuals who are part, who've registered to be part of these particular sessions. And if you might be interested in Rataka who are part of these sessions, you can uh, just hit me up by sending me a message directly over here. 
and uh, tell me you're interested in being part of these sessions. The sessions are 2,500 Kenya shillings, and it's a very, very good opportunity for you to come and learn digital skills and computer skills. These sessions are actually going to be running for 21 days, and I really, really welcome you to be part of these sessions. So yes, thank you to be part of the sessions, as usual number, only when you to me a message, or you can give me a call. So our discussion today, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be about uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So today happens to be second, the second of February, 2024. Now I want to already who've raised their hands and they want to talk to us and tell us what artificial intelligence is. I'm going to start with Kislin. Is it Kislin? Okay. Ruthwell era era guy. Yes, good evening, Elvis. Good evening, good evening. <clears throat> okay, artificial intelligence refers mm -hmm. to the simulation of human intelligence in mm -hmm. machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. Like the goal of, of artificial intelligence is, is to create systems that can perform tasks, typically like human beings. Yeah, very good, very good. I think we need to give a, a round of, of applause uh, to Ruthwell. A round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the very good definition, Asante. Uh, James. James, what is artificial intelligence? Yes, good, good evening. Good evening, James. Yeah. I I would support what the previous person has said about what is artificial intelligence, okay. and uh, it is it is how machines have been programmed to perform like human beings, mm -hmm. and uh, we can see that a tool like ChatGPT is is doing exactly what humans used to do there before. Mm -hmm. ChatGPT, for example, is writing what humans used to do there before so i would support what the previous person has said thank you thank you james santi we give james a, a james a, a round of applause uh i mean define it it's quite yeah. nice. when you join eh? when you join the session please mute your microphone okay very well very well uh I'll go with uh, Walter Wamboy. Walter. 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 Okay. We we'll move on to the next person. Keep uh, Keep Koske, Hilary San. Keep Koske, keep Koske. Come on. Okay. Belinda Nanjala. Okay. Uh, Resi Nema. Guys are afraid of defining what Nini is. Mushoki, someone. <coughs> Okay, okay. All right, all right. I think we just have to move on eh? because of time. And uh, we will be talking about what it really entails to talk about artificial intelligence. So, ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome to the session. Welcome to the session. I have an idea. But, uh, thank you. As you join in, please mute your microphone to this key. Uh, this is scare maybe some issues, but anyway, thank you. Thank you for all those who've been part of this session so far. Now, so today we're going to be delving about to in the topic of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, we're going to be understanding these particular technologies that are reshaping our world. I think everyone's eye may scare about artificial intelligence. By show of hands, how many guys, give me a thumbs up if you've heard about artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
Give me a thumbs up. Give me, give me a thumbs up if you've heard of artificial intelligence and machine learning so far. You lazima uko umesikia about artificial intelligence and machine learning at any one point in your life. There are very, very many people. But you see, it's not a topic of discussion in today in Kenya because we don't really understand what it is. So today I'm going to be introducing you to the history of artificial intelligence. And I'll also give you some very simple illustrations of what it entails to talk about artificial intelligence. Now, this is what we'll cover. And remember, this one is an extensive session and uh, the session is not going to be, this one is not the first session. We will have like four more sessions to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Because believe you me, if, if the next generation of individuals can equip themselves with the ability to understand artificial intelligence, machine learning, and understand the that is involved in artificial intelligence and machine learning, we could actually go further. So I'll give you an introduction to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, later, we'll also get to talk about global and local perspectives on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, we'll also talk about core concepts and types of artificial intelligence and machine learning. We'll also get to delve into a very simple real world application in Kenya and uh, challenges and eth ethical considerations. Yes, people have talked about AI and said, artificial intelligence yes it is very good we understand we completely uh, completely agree with you but there is an ethical dilemma that comes with artificial intelligence we will also get to discuss that we'll also talk about the future of artificial intelligence and machine learning we'll discuss emerging trends future potential and how we can prepare for what's next yes believe me right now a lot of jobs have, have actually been replaced by artificial intelligence right now you find that uh, what we now go for to come uh, web development, coding, and stuff because you think that Chat GPT is going to replace you? Not really. One thing I tend to think is that we can use these as tools to even better our lives or even make things easier. Now, nowadays you don't even need quite a number of things when you have artificial intelligence in your in your way. But that means that you need to be scaling up. All right. So, what is artificial intelligence? And uh, I want you to follow me very closely so that you can get to grasp what it means by artificial intelligence. Now, we had a very, very good definition of artificial intelligence from the first participant. And basically, artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence. Listen to that. Artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. All right? It's the simulation of what? your abilities and your cognitive abilities as a human being to read, write, interpret, visualize all things in machines that can actually be programmed to think and learn like humans. Now, these intelligence ma intelligent machines can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. Some of the examples of uh, this, the tasks that actually uh, need human intelligence is an example is visual perception, all right? Yeah, speech recognition, decision making, and language translation. These are the things that you find that as a human being, it is very easy for you to do. Now, how do we transmute all these and put it in a machine? We do that through artificial intelligence. Now, I'll give you a brief history of artificial intelligence, and I want you to really follow this closely. Remember that we said this session should be ending by 9 p.m. We don't want to take much of your time. So the concept of artificial intelligence. And remember, I'm using PowerPoint presentations. And after this session, I will share these particular slides in my Telegram channel. So you'll get a free copy of all these. Now, the concept of artificial intelligence actually dates back myths and stories, uh, dates back to ancient myths and stories of artificial beings endowed with intelligence or consciousness. Well, we can actually predate it. Kitambo Sana, when you have uh, when you had the Egyptian pharaohs, but um, we have to talk about artificial intelligence in terms of a modern concept. Now, the journey of artificial intelligence actually began in 1956. 1956 is the first time that we had uh, the issue of artificial intelligence, all right? And uh, it was actually talked about during the Dartmouth Conference in 1956, which is actually known as the birth of artificial intelligence and scientific discipline. Remember that artificial intelligence itself is a scientific discipline, all right? And uh, the birth 
of artificial intelligence began in 1956. Now, it was actually founded by quite a number of guys. All these guys were in that particular conference talking about artificial intelligence. They were trying to understand how artificial intelligence, how we can actually transmute our intelligence and our abilities as human beings into machines. So these were part of part and parcel of uh, these guys. They have very tough names, because it pronounce eh? But we have Ray Solomonov, we have Nathaniel Chester, we have Mar Marvin Minsky, we have John McCarthy, we have Cloud Channel, among other people. And these were the guys who were the first pioneers of artificial intelligence. So here are some key milestones of artificial, in artificial intelligence. And I want you to follow me closely, because this one is how you understand the concept of artificial intelligence. Now, in the 1950s, in the 1950s, are we together up to that point, ladies and gentlemen? Give me a thumbs up on TikTok and in Google Meet. Two copper mod. Are you able to see the, the slides properly? Give me a thumbs up if you're able to see the slides properly. Remember on TikTok, you can actually click a certain button down there. It's going to give you a, a landscape view of the slides. So Hutakuona struggle, Kuona Sana. You can actually just turn your phone and view the slides very easily. Very well. Now, we are talking about milestones in artificial intelligence. Now, in 1950, we have this guy, Alan Turing, who happens to be, uh, he's actually a mathematician and computer scientist from uh, the UK, that is Britain. And uh, Turing proposed that a computer, listen to this, he proposed that a computer can be said to possess artificial intelligence if it can mimic human responses under specific conditions. I want to repeat that to you, ladies and gentlemen. The Turing, Turing proposed, Turing proposed that a computer, all right, can be said to possess artificial intelligence, can be said to possess artificial intelligence if it can mimic human responses under specific conditions. That is what we refer to as uh, the Turing test. All right, and if you look at this particular visualization over here, it shows that this one is artificial intelligence and this is a human being. Now the Turing test shows that if a computer was able to mimic what a human being can actually do, then automatically it can actually be referred to have human intelligence, or sorry, artificial intelligence, due to the mimicking of human responses under specific conditions. Now, let me go further to actually encapsulate on the same. The Turing test was, is a concept that was developed by a guy called Alan Turing. And this guy is a British mathematician and computer scientist who was actually in the 1950s. Now, the test actually is, is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior listen to this, to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human being. Now, here's an example. Here's a very simple uh, explanation to understand this. And, and remember, all through this session, ladies and gentlemen, to talk on a, a bit of some technical jargon, but don't worry about the technical jargon. As long as you're able to understand the concept and able to understand what we have in terms of illustrations, now, I want you to imagine this. As, as you're seated watching or listening, I want you to put this in position. Now, imagine that you're having a text-based chat. You're texting on your phone, all right? Like sending messages on a smartphone or a computer with someone you cannot see or hear. So you're texting someone that you cannot see or someone you can hear, all right? The twist is this you're not sure if you're chatting with another person or a program, all right? You are not sure whether you're chatting with a real person or whether you're chatting with a computer program or a bot or an artificial intelligence program. You are not sure. Now, the Turing test itself says that if you, as the judge of the conversation, cannot reliably tell the difference between the human and the AI, meaning the AI's response, responses are as human-like as the human, then automatically the AI has passed the test. So if probably you're chatting with something, someone you don't hear or someone that you're not seeing, and then you realize that the responses that you're getting 
are more human and you cannot tell whether they are human or inhuman but the, the responses that you're getting generally are like you're talking to a normal human being then automatically ai has passed the test of artificial intelligence and that is what we refer to as a turing test okay now this test actually demonstrates that the machine has achieved a level of artificial intelligence that is indistinguishable from human intelligence in the context of the conversation. Now, nowadays, you might find yourself having to interact with a chatbot. You may get into a website and you're texting. You, you, you think you're talking to customer support, but over and above, you realize that this response, the response that you're getting is not robotic, it's quite natural, yeah? Then automatically using the Turing test defies as artificial intelligence. Because now you're not, it, you cannot distinguish and say that this is not a human being. So that's the Turing test, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want to introduce you to another concept over here. And remember, Niliwambia, that uh, to live another technical jargon, to live and what you're going to be seeing today. But at the end of the day, it is for you to get to grasp something to Umpia. At least to Kiena Kulala Leo, or even when you wake up tomorrow. You can tell something, you can tell people that you learned something about neural networks. Now, are we together up to that point, ladies and gentlemen? Give me a thumbs up on TikTok. Give me a thumbs up if you're still together. I think we are close to two to 450. We're close to 450 on uh, in this particular session. So give me a thumbs up if uh, you can uh, you can actually uh, see this particular slide. Nakama tuko pamoja. How many guys have heard of neural networks? Nani am asking about neural networks before. Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of neural networks. Mahali, atakamu meskia anyone talking about neural networks. All right. Now, this one is a very simple illustration of neural networks in the 1960s. All right. You can look at this. These are neural networks. Now, I know you're, you're wondering, what, what is a neural network? What is a neural network? Now, what is a neural network? Let me explain that. And remember, I said earlier that we will be using illustrations to talk about everything that we are discussing in this particular session. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to imagine your brain. You imagine your brain as a very busy city full of roads and intersections. Now, I want you to put that in your mind. I want you to put that in your mind. And the illustration that I want you to have is something like this. In your brain, I want you to put these in perspective. All right? Can, can you guys hear me? Someone is saying that I'm not audible. Am I audible enough? If I'm audible, Nisawa, I've tried my best to make sure that I have all the best systems in place so that you can hear me. On TikTok, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, very well. Now, in the previous slide, I've said that imagine your brain is a very busy city full of roads and intersections. Your brain, now I've told you to imagine about your brain. So this is how your brain should look like with roads and intersections with traffic lights. Now, these are actually symbolizations of traffic lights. Traffic lights over here, traffic lights over here. These are traffic lights again, we have vehicles, all the rest, we even have buildings. This is a very simple illustration of your brain, all right, as a city that has intersection, intersections, traffic lights, and the rest. Now, each intersection can make a decision. Like this particular intersection over here can make a decision. You can either decide to go this way, all right, I don't know which route, but this is just a diagrammatic representation. This intersection can take you this way. This one, can, you can also move this way. This one can make you go this in this particular direction. This traffic light is going to stop this. This light is going to stop this. I want you to put that in your mind. Now, each intersection can make a decision, like stopping cars or letting them go, based on the traffic lights. The traffic lights are the rules. The traffic lights are the rules. Remember this. We are talking about your brain being a city. All right? The, the traffic lights that you can see over here are rules. Now, basically, the traffic lights in uh, uh, the, the, tra the traffic lights, like when you go to driving, there is always we have which colors do we have 
for traffic lights, I want to see, give, leave a comment. Which colors do we have? I want to see everyone. Comment, comment over here, comment over here. Which colors are there in traffic lights? Which colors, which colors are there in traffic lights? We someone is saying, someone is even saying, <laughs> which colors? We have red, we have what? We have red, amber, and red, amber, and green. Someone is saying we have orange. Do we have orange? In <laughs> okay. Do we have orange? Do we have orange in the? Uh, someone is saying pink. Someone is saying there is pink colors in. The <laughs> I think you need to go back to driving school because yeah, there's there's no pink color anyway. So it's red, amber, and green. All right. So red, um, amber, red actually means that you stop. Amber means that you get ready, and green means you go. All right. So someone is saying men are colorblind. We need to understand. Okay, I can understand that. No problem. So each intersection has traffic lights that determine whether a car is going to stop or to go. That is the definition. And as you can see, this is what we have as a grammatic representation. Now, picture a neural network, all right? The neuron, a neural network is a simplified computer-made version of this city. That is a neural network. A neural network is a simplified computer-made version of this. You see this particular city that we, we have put in our heads. Such that Ugivika Apa, you might find this particular traffic light that is red. The rule says that you stop. All right. Now, if it turns green, that mean, it means that I actually go. All right. To many people who know driving school, there is something we used to refer to as a, as an MTB. An MTB actually tells you in Africa happens. If you there is, if you're in this lane, you have to move here. Those are the basic rules of driving, and it's just a very simple representation of. Uh, of, of basically uh, a neural network, okay? Now, this one is a very simple illustration of a computerized neural network, okay? Now, in a neural network, we have many tiny units, like those particular intersections. You see these particular intersections that we've talked about, easy, mingi, heavy, all these, all these, all right? We've said that in a neural network, we have many tiny units, like intersections, called neurons. These are called neurons. Now, these neurons are connected by paths. How are they connected? By paths, like roads. Now, when we give the neural network a task, information travels along these paths, and at each intersection, at each intersection, decisions are made based upon the rules that we've set up. So if we've, if we've set up a rule that ikifika mahali hapa, you stop. It's red, stop. Yeah. It's green. You can move. It's amber. Get ready. This and this. Okay. Now, these rules are actually not fixed. They change and improve as the neural network is trained. As the neural network is trained, all right, with more data, similar to how a city might adjust traffic light patterns to improve traffic flow flow now i want you to understand this ladies and gentlemen now the example that i'm using with you guys is a neural network of you making your brain a neural network with intersections of roads okay now a computerized neural network all right is where we feed data to this particular system to make it function better. It's the same way like if we have a city and it has roads and stuff. And then we realize, if you get to Kemadi, we've realized there is a lot of traffic. So what can we do? We've studied, we've realized it is a problem. So we can decide to divert the traffic. We can have a certain rule that if you get here, the the, the car, maybe we put some traffic lights and say that for the cars then you in uh, this particular direction they will stop and the cars coming from this particular direction can actually get away and the others the same cycle continues that's a very simple example of a neural network all right that's something we're trying to understand now just how just like a city learns the best way to manage traffic a neural network 
learns from lots of examples to make accurate decisions or predictions, right? Now, we are talking about the neural network that is now computerized. It feeds on information. When it gets the information and deciphers the information and understands and it tries to learn, it makes more accurate decisions or predictions. Now, I'm going to ask you this question, ladies and gentlemen. How many guys remember the first time ChatGPT actually launched? How many guys remember the first time ChatGPT launched? Give me a thumbs up if you remember. Come on, remember. That time when you were trying to use ChatGPT, it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite precise. Sometimes it will give you errors. Sometimes it would give you problems. But right now that thing is perfect. Why it has been, it has gotten data understood, it has learned, it has been able to make more accurate decisions or predictions. Like right now, if you went and opened a prompt on ChatGPT, you will find that the information is quite precise. Now, there's another version of ChatGPT 4.0 that is more precise and better. They, in fact, it can, it can even generate images. Like, let me show you. You see this image? This image was actually created using ChatGPT 4. You just write the prompt and tell it to generate a very simple neural network to illustrate neural networks to someone who's never heard of it. And believe you me, it's going to understand what you mean and come up with a descriptive idea and come up with a very simple illustration of what it means. So that's what you're trying to talk about neural networks, right? Now, I'll now get this. This illustration now is going to be a bit powerful so that you can understand what we mean. Now, for instance, for instance, if you show that neural network thousands of pictures of cats and dogs, over time, that particular neural network gets really good at telling which is which. Now, if you give it thousands of pictures of dogs, cats, and the rest, if you feed it with information, even if you point a cat, even if you show it fit, it's going to tell you this is a cat, this one is going to be a dog, all right? It really gets it gets really good at telling which is which because it has learned the traffic patterns of data that define what makes a cat, what makes a cat a cat, and what makes a dog a dog. Now, here's a very simple illustration of a neural network. Now, what we are doing, I want you to look at these particular arrows. This arrow that is getting into the neural network is us feeding information to the neural network and telling the neural network that this particular image that you see is a cat. Now we also tell it that this particular image that you see is a dog. So in any case, if someone decides to ask the neural network, I want you to look at this picture. Tell me, is this a dog or a cat? Then automatically the output from the neural network is going to be like, this is a dog or this is a cat, sorry. So even if you give it a brown cat, it's going to know that this is a cat because it has been able to study and get a lot of information and understood which one is which one. It has been able to understand data. It has been able to understand patterns. It has been able to get to assess and understand imagery from various sources and been able in Mercato, now it's able to, de to decide this one is a dog, this one is a cat. That's why artificial intelligence systems are actually very powerful. All right, so we've talked about neural networks. The image over here illustrates a neural network, a neural network that has been fed information and told that this image is a dog. Like if you look at this, this one is a different image. This is a different image, as you can see. This one is a different image. This one is a different image. This is a different image. This is a different image. This is a different image. Is a different image. So in any case, even if you bring a cat, Oh, time is up. Okay, let's add some 30 minutes. Let's add some time, uh, 30 minutes so that we can actually finish up. Uh, are we still, are we getting something? Mutuang, am I, am I, am I preaching? Something? I'll ask like a preacher. Are you getting something that Unona uh, Unelewa, something about neural networks? Do, do we proceed ama to achieve hapo? To fungi a chapter hapo, we go and uh, share. Do, do we proceed? <laughs> we proceed, okay. He, someone is saying the, this one is not a dog. Okay, no problem. And as you can see, by the way, if you look at this image, 
the, the image has actually, the neural network has actually even been fed of on even pause, imionyeshwa adi pause. Like if you look at this one, this one is, a, is like a cat. This one is a dog, all right? So anytime if you ask the neural network, e picture what is it? Like chat GPT is something like that. It has neural networks that understand that this plant is called this, this is called this, all right? Now, the image, this image that I've actually shown you here, illustrates a neural network learning to differentiate between cats and dogs. It shows the neural network at the center. This is the neural network over here at the center. And with distinct streams of data. Now, you see all these arrows that you're seeing coming out, getting in. These are streams of data, okay? with distinct streams of data for cats and dogs flowing into it. So now it's understanding, it's understanding. And that is why people, that is why people are afraid of artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence gets to understand over very many data subsets and make accurate decisions. And the reason for me holding this particular session is to empower you to get into artificial intelligence. It doesn't mean that you have to get a job. We can use artificial intelligence, even as youth, to better our systems of governance. We can use artificial intelligence itself as youth to get to better our financial systems. We can even use artificial intelligence systems to better predict health problems. We can even use artificial intelligence as youth to even better predict weather patterns. We can use artificial intelligence to even better predict economic situations or even better our economic conditions by understanding data subsets, understanding things like neural networks, getting to use data the proper way to get accurate predictions from all these data. Am I saying something, Watuam? Give me a thumbs up if, if you feel like in a kuguza, in a kuguza. Even on TikTok, give me a thumbs up if you're getting a thing or two. Because these are things that we're not being taught in university. I believe universities right now should have programs, two years, three years programs, to understand artificial intelligence. Mutu anangia shule, the first thing you get to understand is artificial intelligence from day one, had it day 400. You get to understand artificial intelligence because this is the future. This is the future. We need our own artificial intelligence systems as Kenyans. We need artificial intelligence systems that can actually manage and predict traffic Particular time that we have to be moving in Nairobi, we are relying on police officers. To, when you want to a mechoka because of regulation of traffic, we can understand, like, we can use artificial intelligence, basically, to even get to understand where imminent economic situations of countries are. Like, we cannot, be, we cannot be worrying about floods. Why? Because we have artificial intelligence systems that have been able to track weather patterns from the Kenya Meteorological Institute or whatever, and they have been able, all right, and they, these artificial intelligence systems have been able to decipher data over time so that we can accurately predict that kunawakati kutanyesha and we need to be ready as a country. Believe me, we'll make more accurate decisions when we use artificial intelligence. At the same time, all right, uh, yeah, I know there's a disadvantage with artificial intelligence, especially with people losing but if you look at the bigger part and the bigger picture of having artificial intelligence, we get to even maintain our human character. We get to even maintain ourselves as human, human beings because we can even better our health. But what can we do? Like hospitals and medical institutions can use the data they have to actually predict and understand that this particular chronic illness is affecting a certain group of people. So what can we do to actually try and solve this problem? All right, we are experiencing this and this problem and deficiency and this and this and this from children. How better can we solve that? So that's the thing we're discussing today. And I was just trying to explain what artificial intelligence systems are. Okay. Uh, we move on to the path. Now, the visualization that I've actually shown you over here captures the process of the network analyzing these images and learning the traffic patterns, yeah? Remember, remember, the traffic patterns of data that define the characteristics of each animal, improving its ability to make correct identifications over time, okay? So that's something we've talked about. Now, we're going to move on to the next part, all right? We're going... This one is... This is a dog, right? 
Give me a thumbs up if you think this is a dog. Easy new Me, I'm saying this is a this is a dog. Now, how about this? How about this? Is it a cat or a dog? This one. Cat or a dog. Yani binadamu analemoa. Like I'm very sure if you put this in an artificial intelligence system, it's it's going to know. Eh? Higher. This one. This is a dog, right? This, this is a what? This is a dog. Someone is saying it's a cat. This is a dog. All right. This one is a cat. This is a cat. This is a cat. This is a dog. This is also a dog. This one is a dog. This one is a what? So anyway, yeah. I could have done all this story of forex trading. Forex trading, if you want to go and learn, go to baby tips. Me, I don't talk about uh, forex trading anyway. Uh, so in the 1980s, we are talking about trends and uh, developments in artificial intelligence. In the 1980s, we had the rise of machine learning with the advent of algorithms that could learn through data. How many guys, how many guys have heard of, uh, how many guys have heard of machine learning? If you've heard of machine learning, ML. If you've heard of machine learning, give me a thumbs up. If you've heard of machine learning, give me a thumbs up. All right. Now, what is machine learning? What is machine learning? Now, I'm going to try to explain machine learning using a very, very simple concept. Okay? Now, we are back again. Now, this image over here illustrates a farmer. This guy that you can see over here is a farmer. Okay. Let me let me let me turn on my the guys on uh, on TikTok are saying that they're not able to see my my cursor. So let me just turn it on. You guys can actually see it. Okay, just a moment. Uh, let me let me turn on my cursor so that you can see it. I don't know where you would do this, but uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, I'm, I'm looking. I, I think I think you guys you guys were who are, who are actually watching this from TikTok. You'll have to allow me to just uh, proceed on without uh, without showing the casa do in a letter sheet. So anyway, at someone is saying naona vimuli vimuli hapo sasa. Don't worry. Now, we're trying to explain machine learning. Now, I want you to imagine this. Ukai chini and imagine that you're a farmer. You imagine that you're a farmer in a rural, in a rural area. In a rural area. It's very tough for people like me, especially what we mlima. This one, this one is going to be very tough for, for us. In a rural area. Okay? So imagine that you are a farmer in a rural area uko majambani kwenu imagine that you are a farmer okay and every year and every year you try to predict the best time to plant your crops you try to predict the best time to plant your crops now i'm going to be using a very very simple illustration over here Onesmas, Onesmas, don't worry. I'll have to use you. We were not Don Roama, my good friend. I have to use you all the time. Onesmas. Oh, yes, sir. Now, tell me. Ni kuulize swali moja. Kuulize. Kwenu majambani, when you want to plan, what do you look at? Si muna kaanga hivi, muna angalia mawingu, muna anza kusema, na kuna kaa kama kutanyesha. Eh, na sima tuangalie. Unaangalia juu guanza, uone vinyeri ya hiko, unaona kuna... Kuna sisi kuna zile ndege zikipita tunajua ni time ya season season ya kuplant. So So basically you rely on data from the weather, the season and past experiences. Last year kulinyesha hii mwaka kutanyesha, si ndio? Yes, yes. So that's that's an illustration. Now I'm trying to explain machine learning to you. So tumesema we're going to use a very simple example of Onesmus. Onesmus is a farmer in a rural area. And every year, he tries to predict the best time to plant his crops. Now, Onesmus relies on number one, the weather, number two, the season, and number three, 
past experiences. Are we to get up to that point? Are we to get up to that point? Umeaka yo picha kwa I want you to put a photo of Onesmas in your head. He's a farmer in a rural area. And anytime he wants to plant, plant something, he relies on the weather. Uh, he also relies on uh, the previous experiences and the current season. Now, Onesmas decides to talk to his neighbors and gather all the advice that he can. Year after year, every year he's getting the best advice, every year. All right? Now, he gets better at predicting the right time to plant so that he can actually maximize his harvest. So he asks, he goes and asks, Wewe, si ulikuwa, ulikuwa hai 1990. How was the weather by then? What is, that, what is it that actually grew so well? Ninini haswa. And that's why I'm telling you, ukisikia ni kikuambia usome data science or even data analysis. This is the reason as to why I'm telling you this, because data is going to give you some of the most accurate decisions in the world. So, Onesmas goes ahead and asks various farmers, wewe, wewe, tell me something. 1950 kulinyesha. 1960, uh -huh. what was going doing so well in 1990? Uh -huh. 2010, what was this? So after gathering most of this data, Onesmus becomes better at predicting the right time to plant so that he can actually maximize his harvest. Now, the process of Onesmus learning from the experiences of various farmers who are his neighbors, all right? and making more informed decisions over time is similar to how machine learning works just in a digital context now machine learning is basically we feed uh, an artificial intelligence system data insights of what happened in the past to make an accurate decision of something we can do in future all right, and we've used a very simple illustration of Onesmas. He's a farmer who kwao, and we Chapalungu. He's a farmer in Chapalungu. Amanda kauliza hawa the all the various farmers. Nini ebu ni ambie ni kitu moja. Let me ask you something. Last year, what what was so good last year? Iyo makangi na ni nini elikuwa mzuri. So over time, as he collects data and information, he gets better at predicting the best time to plant and maximize his harvest. Now, machine learning itself is like a digital farmer that learns from data instead of fields and crops. Now, most of us as farmers in Kenya will go to the tutenda kwa jamba tuwakali. Hey, now by the way, even you know, hapa, wacha kwanza nisipande viazi. Ama, wacha tuwekerea maharagwe. Watch out work in Mahindi. That's something that is very common. We rely on what we see in our fields and in our crops. Now, instead of relying on what? Weather patterns and season and analyzing the data, which is lots of data. Now, assuming you used, you deciphered, you took all these data, analyzed it, and came up with an artificial intelligence program that can actually accurately predict that if you plant this, <laughs> He, he, my friend, utaumia, utaoshwa, all right? Because most of the farmers in Kenya, like if you look at the farmers in Netherlands, if you look at farmers in countries, easy top-notch countries, they rely on data. They rely on uh, weather patterns. They rely on predictive analysis. They rely on what, what really happened this time and what do we expect? In Kenya, unamkanga tu naenda unona. Jirani yako amepanda mahindi. Ah, tuwekele mahindi, my friend. Yeah, unenda kidogo kidogo unakuta jirani yako amepanda nduma unakuja unapanda 50 acres zote zinaisha but you see now if we relied on data to make more accurate decisions through machine learning are we together up to that point ladies and gentlemen are we still together tuko pamoja a thumbs up if you're still together now what you do is that you feed this digital farmer examples from the past now, these digital farmers, he mwaka 2020, by the way, this is what happened, this is what happened. Like, we can actually, examples from the past, like how certain actions led to specific outcomes. We just feed it with data. A brief example would be, 
you might give it data on how different factors like rainfall, temperature, and soil type have affected crop yield in, yields in the past. Let me ask you something. Due to Lizoma science and we did physics and all these things, does it, when, at what time were we ever told that, like, data like rainfall, temperature, and soil type is impactful when it comes to agriculture? How many guys remember that? How many guys remember Iso Vitizote? Well, we used to do experiments. We just used to do experiments. There's, hey, there are funny things. There are things I don't even remember. I, I remember there's a time we used to dig a hole in the field. Then we put something inside. I don't know. Hey. Then we used to create a wind sock. I don't know if it's a wind sock to understand all these things. Come at Tunge Ketisho in that direction so that we can understand, all right? So that we can understand how to make data work for us. Tunge Kuambele. But anyway, so we've decided to give the program data from rainfall, temperature, and soil type, all right? And various, and how it has actually affected crop yields in the past. Now, over time, just like how Onespans has been able to learn and predict, the system is able to learn, all right? to predict the best planting times. The machine learning system is also able to find patterns and make predictions, all right? It might predict which crops will do best in the next season or when is the best time to plant them based on the data it has actually analyzed. The more data it has, the better it gets at making decisions. Believe me, for sure. Now, I want you to look at this. This is a very simple illustration. And instead of relying na on neighbor's advice, but I could not a neighbor come all the way, Kenodia. Unona to the band and anyway, we don't come to the Kerea Boga Ivy Boga to Stormoka. Kenodia Ebunia Big to Moja to Kerea Gano. Unona come a season it up with its idea. Kenodia to Kerea and Boga to Kenna to Panda Nyanya. Do you think your kid will make sense? Now, instead of relying on advice from your neighbors and your friends and your fellow drunkards, I'm sorry for that. Sorry, yeah, it's a slip of the tongue, but I hope you get that. So instead of relying on neighbors' advice and personal experience, machine learning uses algorithms. Now, what is an algorithm? It is a set of rules and mathematical models to process and learn from data. How many guys have learned, have heard of calculus? How many guys have heard of calculus? How many guys have done statistics? Come on, I think everyone over here, if you've passed through high school, lazima umefanya mahali statistics, statistics one and two. Yeah? Statistics, how many guys have done statistics? We, we really used to do a lot of calculations and stuff from statistics. And even guys taking calculus, there's a lot of maths and algorithms that are actually involved. All right. Now, it is like having access to the wisdom and experience of thousands of farmers from ac across the globe, all condensed into a program that can help make decisions. So we can collect information and data from various farmers, from various locations, and we have all this information in one particular program that is actually going to help us in making decisions. All right. Now, in a local context, I want you to imagine this. In a local context, like if you look at this image over here, we can collect information all right we can collect a lot of data like if you look at all these this is just something to show you this is a neural network as you can see over here getting to understand data from various sources at the same time we then use this data as output to make better decisions now in a local tech context imagine using this technology that is machine learning to predict not just agricultural outcomes but also to address local changes challenges sorry like managing water resources, all right? We can use machine learning to manage water resources. We can also use machine learning to improve traffic flow in a city, or even predicting market trends for small businesses. A company like Amazon, Amazon, Amazon itself uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to predict what people might be buying in a certain period of time. And it's very, very important for you to get to grasp that. Let me 
it's it's very very important for you to get, be able to and to grasp that because it's quite important that we can use machine learning to make more accurate decisions all right now machine learning can help tailor solutions to these problems by learning from vast amounts of data related to these issues grown from, from local and global sources that's something you have to understand now so basically to just give you a very simple definition is that machine learning is about using computers to learn from experiences. Experiences being what? Data. To make predictions or decisions just as you learn from past seasons to make your farming more productive. All right. So basically, machine learning is a tool that when applied thoughtfully can significantly benefit various aspects of life. Remember Niluambia? Agriculture healthcare, education, among others. And it can actually be tailored to, to local needs and challenges, all right? So we can get to grasp that. Now, in the 21st century, in the 21st century, now we are in a trend. We are talking about artificial intelligence in the 21st century. AI breakthroughs. How many guys have heard of something referred to as deep learning? Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of deep learning. Deep learning. We must get deep learning, Mahali. <clears throat> How many guys have heard of a certain, a certain artificial intelligence program that beat a chess master, a grandmaster? Artificial intelligence, it learns, in a learn moves from very many people. I want you to do this. There's a documentary on uh, YouTube, in, uh, in the Age of AI. It is a full documentary by Frontline PBS official. This is the link. You can take a screenshot of this immediately after this session because we are about to wind up. I want you to go and watch this particular documentary. Go and watch this particular documentary. You will get to understand what I'm talking about. You're going to find that it's going to, artificial intelligence is quite powerful, by the way. It has actually really been implemented in China. China is currently the leading nation when it comes to artificial intelligence. All right? They're the guys behind TikTok. You know? So I don't know if it's that, but I've had something like that. So anyway, watch this documentary. It's called the In the Age of AI. Take a screenshot so that you can go and watch. I'll still send this particular PowerPoint presentation on, on my Telegram channel so that you can actually just have a look. All right. Now, what is the importance of AI in today's world? First of all, there is a lot of trans transformation across industries. Now, AI itself is transforming industries by enhancing, number one, efficiency, personalizing experiences and opening new possibilities in healthcare, finance, agriculture, and beyond. We also have the ability to solve complex problems, all right? We can be able to tackle climate change to advancing in medical research. AI plays, artificial intelligence plays a crucial role in solving some of the world's most complex problems. Everyday convenience. Artificial intelligence has actually been embedded in everyday life. From basically recommendation systems to streaming platforms, yeah, to virtual assistants in smartphones, making life more convenient. All right. Now, here's a very simple illustration. And I'm about to wind up, ladies and gentlemen. This one is happens to be the first section of artificial intelligence. And I hope that you really get to understand how can we apply artificial intelligence in Kenya? Now, this one is an example that I actually got to think about, something that we could probably as all of us could actually think about artificial intelligence being applied in Kenya. And I'm going to be giving you this very simple illustration. Now, one impactful application of artificial intelligence in Kenya today is in the healthcare sector. Remember, in the beginning of this session, we talked about how we can use artificial intelligence in various sectors, healthcare sector, manufacturing sector, all these other sectors, even in governance, public governance. One impactful application of AI in Kenya today is in the healthcare sector, in particular in disease diagnosis and management. Now, I'll give you a notable case study in the use of AI in diagnosing and managing malaria. All right? Malaria has been a very big problem for very many of us in Kenya. How many guys have had malaria? I'm a part of malaria. Give me a thumbs up if you've um, part of malaria. Unatembea like you're, a, you're and shaking like a chameleon on a fiddle twig. Yeah? How many guys have had that problem with malaria? We can use artificial intelligence for early diagnosis of malaria. So we'll talk about 
application of AI in malaria diagnosis. Okay, so I'll give you a, a very simple illustration of how the government and an AI company could actually partner to create a solution or provide a solution that could actually impact and try and solve the problem of malaria. So one impactful application of AI in Kenya today is in the health sector, all right? And you're talking about disease management and uh, to just try and bring about managing malaria, which is actually a significant challenge in Kenya. Now, here's an image of the malaria situation in Kenya. And uh, this one is, I'm not, this one is actually an image, all right? The, the documentary is, is in the image of, in the age of AI. This is just a very simple image. Please don't take it like Sijuina in Giliria, these people. No, 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 no. This is a full AI generated image and I didn't want to use an image of people for privacy, for protection of culture, for protection of everything. But malaria remains one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality in Kenya, particularly among children under five years, all right? And pregnant women, it's quite common. Now, we have traditional diagnostic methods, such as microscopy and rapid diagnostic tests. How many guys have heard of RDTs? Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of an RDT. An RDT. An RDT is a rapid di diagnostic test well, that maybe when you want to understand uh, and uh, when you want to know whether you have malaria or not. And this actually requires skilled personnel and uh, it can actually be time consuming or unavailable in remote areas, which is true, all right? Now, that is a problem. Now, here's an AI solution. This one is an artificial intelligence solution, all right? Researchers and tech companies have developed an AI, have developed AI driven applications that can diagnose malaria from blood samples. Remember that we said that for our AI to work properly, it needs data, it needs to understand the data. It needs to understand the information. It needs to get fed. It feeds, it understands these, 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 and these to actually make better predictions. And as you can see, this image in Yanayakahapa EV is a very simple illustration of us trying to make sure that the AI is able to understand, all right? Malaria through various blood samples with high accuracy. Now, these AI systems are trained on thousands of images of blood slides, learning to detect the presence of malaria, parasite. Hey. The, 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 the feeling as I'm teaching, the slip of the tongue, so forgive me. But Mimi, you have to forgive me because me ni mtu amulima. If you if you hear at one point nimesikia ala na elo just forgive me because it's a slip of the tongue i have a heavy tongue mata ni mingi nyeri kuna baridi so forgive me so these ai systems are trained on on thousands of images of blood slides and they are able to detect the presence of malaria parasites with precision all right comparable to or even exceeding that of experienced micro, microscopists. To the guys in the medical field, I think, but something like that. Now, AI in malaria diagnosis in Kenya. So we've partnered with uh, an AI company and they've developed an artificial intelligence systems that understand the various all right that that have been able to understand the various samples that we've given to the ai to detect malaria parasites with this and be able to know this in malaria this one is not a malaria parasite all right so one significant project involves a partnership between lo a local, Ken local Kenyan authorities and an AI technology firm, all right? The firm has developed an AI-powered microscope. I want you to listen to it. Not your Kenya sometimes. We need, we need to be talking about realistic, realistic things. 
No, I'm talking about an AI powered microscope. All right, an AI powered microscope. You see, some of these things, they sound like Greek, but believe me, if we were able to bring this as a realistic solution using artificial intelligence systems, Believe me, is most of us to even get sick. We will solve most of the problem. All right. So that's the main discussion. We are saying, we are saying, we are saying that we've been able to develop an AI power powered microscope that automates the detection of malaria parasites in blood samples. This is our AI powered microscope. You get to Zinakafiti. Give me a thumbs up if you think it looks good. It looks very good. And as you can see, Kwanza niliongeza kalogo ka Kenya hapa. Niliongeza kalogo ka Kenya nikasema, very nice. An AI powered microscope. We don't need to take three hours for us to do the RDTs. It's going to be very, very simple for us. Why? Because we have artificial intelligence systems that have learned from data across time or from various locations and been able to understand what it entails. People are needed for this. Don't worry. Watch one is also the sweet thing about the, pro the project. Implementation of the project. First of all, we need to train the AI. As I said earlier, we need to train the artificial intelligence system. Now, the AI model was trained on a data set of blood slide images, all right, annotated with the presence or absence of malaria parasites. He kona malaria, he haina. He kona malaria, he haina. This training involved machine learning techniques, all right, that allowed the AI to learn the visual characteristics indicative of malaria. It was embo, ooh, then nah. Hey. Let me let me let me first take a sip of water. As a as a I think I think I'm headed somewhere. Okay. Hey. I don't know what's up with me. In the way I'm told that my English is good. Like any as I said earlier, forgive me. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm able. Okay. You said that this training involved machine learning techniques that allowed the AI to learn the visual characteristics indicative of malaria. We've trained our AI. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. We've trained our AI. To Kayambia, these are the visual characteristics of malaria parasites. And we ask the AI, umelewa, all right? And we ask the AI, have you understood? Now, we get to deployment. The AI powered microscopes were deployed in several clinics across Kenya, mostly in rural areas with limited access to skilled microscopists. Believe me, Kupatam say well, microscopy, especially in rural areas, is going to be a problem. But now with AI powered microscopes, you only need to train just a few individuals, less than one week or two weeks, and you solve a problem. Okay? Now the operation, kunamtualizema ati watu watapoteza kazi. Blood collection needs people to do that. AI cannot do that. So health workers collect blood samples and place them under the AI microscope. All right? The AI analyzes the slides and provides a diagnosis in a fraction of the time required for, for traditional methods with an accuracy rate that meets or exceeds manual examination. Unata kuniambia that if we reduce the time that is taken, like to say me for you to have an RDT test done, an RDT, an RDT is probably going to take, let's say 20, 30 or one hour, Let's say 20 minutes, 30 minutes or one hour. I'm not very sure about it. But now we've realized that if we deploy artificial intelligence powered, AI powered microscopes, we can be able to detect malaria parasites in blood samples in less than a minute. But how many souls, how many children and how many pregnant women do you think we can save? 
the, these are many people. Do you agree with me or you don't you agree with me? Huko pamoja. Yeah? As you can see, we've solved a problem and we've not taken away jobs. Health workers are needed to collect blood samples, all right? People who are going to, the AI is not going to operate itself unless we have robots. But, yeah, I, I, I hope you're getting me. That, that is the solution I've given you. The solution is very simple. Mutuangu tutumie AI, we get to learn and train this particular model. We train it, we tell it, that these are the blood samples that you can actually read and understand, all right? He ikona malaria, he haina malaria. This one is showing signs of malaria. This one is not showing signs of malaria. You get. And then we deploy these AI-powered microscopes, microscopes in rural areas, all right? When you kuna mosquitoes and all this stuff and malaria, you know, prone areas. Then instead, <clears throat> instead of you taking 30 minutes for you to get an RDT test done, we reduce it to around one minute or even three minutes, such that we are using our AI-powered microscopes to solve a problem. You see, the thing, I always tell people that sometimes what when you want to go by AI are the people who are lazy, because we've not taken away health workers. We've not taken them away. They are still there. AI is not going to go and collect blood itself by itself. People need to collect blood over there there is someone who is going to give in the medication. We've solved the problem of understanding and knowing this is a malaria problem. Clinicians are needed to solve that problem. We have not taken away their jobs. We've only used data. We've only used an artificial intelligence system. We've only used machine learning. We've, we've only used uh, training an AI model to understand malaria. No, this one is not malaria. We've trained it so perfectly that it's now solving the same, same problem that we had 30 minutes has been turned to one minute. So if you are able to serve only 10 people in a day, all right, if you are only able to serve 10 people in a day, then now, Sasa, the AI program is going to, and the AI powered microscopes will probably bring in around 300 to 3,000 people per day. Unotako Nyambio, we are not going to be able to detect malaria as early as possible and solve it. How have we solved malaria? By just understanding data. Allowing the AI, giving the AI information necessary for it, and then inculcating the same AI program in an artificial intelligence power. The microscopy has not lost the job. Do you think the microscope is going to be working by itself? Atakama ikona AI, it needs an artificial intelligence, it needs someone to operate it. Yeah? You see, it's a microscope, but anyway, so the impact, we need to look at the impact of AI. First of all, it's going to increase diagnostic speed and efficiency. All right. Now, the AI system significantly reduces the time taken to diagnose malaria, enabling quicker treatment decisions. Haven't we solved a problem up with, well, ladies and gentlemen? We've solved a problem. Give me a thumbs up if you think we've, we've solved a problem. Me, I think we've solved a problem for sure. We've solved the problem. Then, accessibility. Now, this technology has made malaria diagnosis more accessible in remote areas, bridging the gap where skilled personnel, personnel are actually scarce. So that means that now, uh, this AI-powered microscope is easy to use. Now, instead of relying so much, so much, on every time we need to be moving microscopes all around, we can only just make sure that the areas that have a lot of malaria have sufficient AI-powered microscopes. And you see, if you can do it, if you can diagnose malaria in less than a minute, then automatically the clinicians and the medics will be able to know, all right, will be able to actually offer relevant solutions. I agree, don't worry. Me, I always tell people that we live in a fair world, and if you disagree with this, that is still okay. That is still okay. Your opinion is still valid. Then we talk about capacity building. Now, this project actually involves training local health workers on using the AI system. We've trained the local health workers. We're not going to go and get guys in construction and train them how to use this particular AI-powered AI system. You're going to use the health workers, all right, on using the AI system, basically building capacity at the community level. 
So now for every community now, you're going to provide employment to health workers who are jobless. Yeah? Those health workers who don't have jobs, they know microscopy, microscopy they know uh, their clinicians. We can actually provide jobs to them, capacity building. So one very simple, one very simple uh, solution is that. Someone is asking about what about the AI robot that are yet to come. Don't worry. So the deployment of AI for malaria diagnosis in Kenya for sure has shown promising results. Giving number one, higher diagnostic accuracy, reduced diagnosis time, and increased access to diagnostic services in under, underserved areas. will have solved a big, big problem, a chunk of a problem by just deploying one AI-powered system. It's very simple. It, this basically it stands as, as a testament to how AI can actually be leveraged to address healthcare challenges in Kenya, offering a scalable model that could be adopted for the diseases as well. Yeah, so you need to get that. Now, uh, for me, I'm not, I'm not looking at the negative impact. For me, if you see, the thing is, I, I, if, if we are looking at something that is already here, let me tell you, Sai AI, we cannot even go and say that we are not going to be using AI. It is already here with us. And I tell people that it is either we adapt or we live. Right now, Ata to Pia Makelele, AI is going to be here with us. And Ata to Semenini, it's always going to be here with us. And you see, yes, I understand guys are saying that they've lost jobs. Funny enough, there are people who've made more money, they've gotten better opportunity by understanding how to use AI. So Ata to Pia Makelele to say negative effects of AI, it's still going to be here with us. Ata to end up to say, as do, oh, ban AI, ban. It is going to be here with us. All right. So I understand when you disagree with me, which is very, very OK, which is very, very OK. Me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person who really agrees on the fact that you can question my opinion and I agree with you. But for me, I say. And uh, yeah, so we are about to finish up. This one is the last part. We're just about to finish up. It's 9, 19 p.m. I should be done. So application of AI and machine learning. So I'm going to give you some various areas of areas of application of AI and machine learning. The first one is data science, and data science is basically analyzing and interpreting complex data to help in decision-making processes. So basically, this also includes developing algorithms and models to extract insights and patterns from data. That is data science. Number two is NLP. NLP stands for natural language processing, all right? So this one is actually involves working on technologies that enable machines to understand and interpret language. Applications include speech recognition, sentiment analysis, and chatbots. This one is NLPs. The guys who are doing very well when they're creating chatbots. So you can also think about that. Then we have computer vision. Developing AI systems can actually process, analyze, and understand images and videos. So applications range from facial recognition systems to autonomous vehicles, okay? So that is computer vision. Then we have number four, robotics. So integrating AI algorithms into robots to enable autonomous decision-making. Applications include industrial automation, drones, and personal assistance. That's something else. So we have healthcare. Artificial intelligence can actually be used to diagnose diseases, predict patient outcomes, and personalize treatment plans. Believe me, if you are able to deploy something like artificial intelligence and machine learning to tackle something like diabetes, we would actually reduce the mortality rate from a certain level to even lower level, all right? So developing tools for medical imaging analysis, we have genomics and drug discovery, that is healthcare. Number six, finance. Now we can use artificial intelligence for algorithmic trading. How are when you to go Forex? There's something we refer to as algorithmic tra trading. And I was looking at this course on Udemy and I was shocked. You can train an AI model to understand <laughs> trading patterns and stuff, and you can actually make the most pre predict. But I'm not telling you to do that, my friend. I don't I don't talk about Forex. And this one is not financial. I, at the same time, in the aspect of finance, we can use artificial intelligence and machine learning for fraud detection, credit scoring. How many guys are... are are listed on uh, in Aitango Ajay Kitu Credit Reference Bureau. Wangapi wamelistiwa CRB. 
How many guys? Give me a thumbs up. I think Ata Mimi Niko ZRB. Niko ZRB. There's a loan I, I took. I have never found which company. Nigani here, but anyway. We talked about credit scoring, then we also have customer service automation. Like sometimes, not just me now, why don't you even think about the reality on the ground? Sai, let me ask you a question. Ukienda equity bank, uambi unataka loan. Immediately, wana kuambia apana, you don't qualify for a loan. And you are like, how, how did these guys know? Kumbe, well, umechukua loan tala, umechukua loan zijui wapi, umeenda ukachukua okash, umechukua all these places. Sasa ukafikiria, ah, sidani equity wanajua. All right, Sidani equity one or two. Data is always there. Data is always there. So it can be applied in finance, as we said earlier. And it, it can also be used for uh, developing predictive models for financial markets. If we had an artificial intelligence and machine learning program, something already, say story and any story as it is the dollar, we will not be having a problem because we could have, be able to have proper financial, to understand financial markets better and even engage in risk management. Like, the government would have already been prepared for this, but now they're relying on speculation from the from uh, the Central Bank of Kenya. It doesn't make sense. The Central Bank of Kenya should be the first organization that is trying to adopt artificial intelligence and machine learning systems in the organization to make better decisions. But these guys are just like, just speculating, oh, we did an oil deal, oh, the, the CG what? If, if only these guys were able to understand financial markets and understand to try and have predictive models that run under machine learning and artificial intelligence. Okay, cybersecurity. We can use AI to detect and respond to cybersecurity threats in real time. We can develop systems for anomaly detection, phishing detection, and secure authentication. That's, that's something we can also use AI for. Education. We can also enhance learning experiences through personalized learning platforms and virtual tutors. We can also use uh, the same information to analyze educational data, to improve uh, teaching strategies and outcomes. That is education itself. Then we talk about entertainment and media. When you open Netflix, it shows you the percentage that this, this one you might like, and the percentage that you might like it is around 80%. And you end up watching that thing. What do you, what do you think that is? You think that is just someone who just did that? That is basically the application of machine learning and artificial intelligence. In fact, you find that systems are even understanding you better. It is good. Like, I remember the time I was on Alibaba. Alibaba is not anymore. When you start watching, I mistakenly opened, I don't know what are these things are called, but I mistakenly opened sex toys. I was not aware of this thing. Immediately, to kufunga kufungua kwenda Instagram, ni mejaziwa at the sex toys. I was like, what has happened over here? So this system has basically, <laughs> I don't know if it's right to say this, but it has understood that that is what I was searching for. And now it's giving me predictions of what I should go and buy. So imagine kwa mahali too, it's, it's quite, enter Jumia has that habit. Jumia, unatoka Jumia kidogo hivi, unaingia Facebook, unakutana mapanti, and you are not even buying panties, you're wondering. Okay, it's something that is still learning. So it's trying to make accurate decisions and predictions of what you might buy. It's also used in entertainment and media. Spotify uses it. We have Amazon uses it. Uh, yeah, all these companies. I was not buying sex toys. I was not, I was looking for something else. Someone is saying that I should not be ashamed. No, no, I was not buying sex toys. I was only looking at, uh, at office desks. So it happened. Uh, E-commerce and retail. We can apply artificial intelligence and machine learning in e-commerce and retail. So this means that you can actually enhance customer experience through personalized recommendations and virtual systems. All right. We can now optimize supply chains and inventory management using predictive analytics. One thing I like about, you know, we mean Livania procurement. And I've realized that companies like these top logistics companies, even globally, are now implementing artificial intelligence and machine learning systems to even there's there's something to anyone who studied procurement there is uh, something we refer to as fast in fast out it's inventory control 
And you find that artificial intelligence and machine learning systems can actually optimize supply chains in a way that you don't remain redundant, you have something that is consistent. When something is needed, we also have various principles in supply chain. But AI is also something that is very good when it comes to that. That is e-commerce and retail. We also have autonomous vehicles, that is vehicles that can actually drive themselves. We can develop algorithms for self-driving vehicles, including uh, uh, perception, navigation, and control systems. Then we have working on simulation and safety assessment tools for autonomous driving. We also have research and development. It's actually very good when it comes to getting to have algorithms, models, and techniques in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Finally, you can also get to ethics and policy in AI. While I when you wanna go bigger about AI, you can also get into ethics and policy to make sure that artificial intelligence systems are not used for war, they are not used for you know corruption, they are not used wrongly. So you can actually address ethical considerations, biases, and fairness in AI applications. You can develop policies and guidelines to ensure responsible use of AI and machine learning. And with that, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes the end of our first session on artificial intelligence and machine learning. All right, that ends. Now, me, I think, and your e session and your to my hold. You see, one thing about me is uh, I believe that in education, I also learn. Nikifunza I also get to learn. So, believe when I was creating this slide, you know, for me, I'm not an AI and machine learning specialist. These are the things I've been learning. All these things are flown over here. And I have not gone to school. I have not gone to school. I've only used YouTube. If you go to YouTube, like Ukikuta to YouTube and search for artificial intelligence, you, you will find everything over here. Like, let me just open it over here. Let me just search for artificial intelligence. You're going to find everything over here. All right? So you can air, this is the documentary I'm telling, I'm telling you of to go and watch. These are to watch. So like, if you watch this video, what is AI? Uh, to me, a chat GPT, go research. So if you want to understand machine learning, all the information is here. All the information is here. So we have basics of machine learning. You get AI versus machine learning. So you can only use all these information to help you understand what it really means. And here he in Idaru, ya Friday. You know, right now Nila se kuya watu share share share. All right. So this one was good. Now, here's something that is going to shock you now. For the next three sessions, we have three sessions that you're going to be having on artificial intelligence and machine learning. These sessions will only be given to the guys who are part of night school. While when you are registered to be part of night schools, are the ones who are actually going to access the next three sessions. Information is power, my people. Like I know it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt your feelings. I know, I know. Believe me, I'm a very good person, but I know it's going to hurt your feelings. Pole, pole. I'm, I'm very sorry for that. Pole sana. But cinema uh, option here YouTube. So the next sessions are only going to be for the people who are going to be part of night school. I'm going to educate them on AI. I'm going to educate them on where to start when you want to get started with AI, as well as machine learning. Now, remember the same same guys will also get an introduction into artificial intelligence. They will even uh, get uh, cybersecurity to understand cybersecurity. And believe me, the introduction I've given you for sure. The only introduction in is a sana. So. For those who want to be part of night school, the charges are 2,500. Come on, you want to be part of night school? The charges are 2,500. And for you, what you have to do is uh, you can actually just join my Telegram channel or you can contact me directly, right? You can just contact me directly and tell me, Elvis, I want to pay to be part of night school, all right? Fee, uh, by the way, you're starting on the 11th of February. So you have till then, you have till then. But uh, it's, I would advocate that you be part of the session that you do to Nanza next week. All right. To Nanza next week, to Nanza next week on Monday. That is the first rehearsal session. Uh, during the rehearsal session, it's only going to be 30 minutes. 
we'll understand how we're going to carry ourselves in uh, the session. We'll also get to understand what software we're going to be reading. Napia will get to understand what it entails. Nita introduce everything about night school so that you can understand. On Wednesday, we'll get to the introduction and the intricacies of how we will conduct our lessons. We have a learning management system, a learning management system. Uh, it's an LMS that is in place. So it's going to help you understand and you know get to comprehend the various lessons that we take. So to Kifanya Daro Leo, we add it into the learning management system. And then after every session, we will have a quiz. All right, we will have a quiz. Now the quiz is meant to help you understand or even try and see if you're grasping anything, all right? It's going to, the quiz is always going to have at least 10 to 20 questions. All these are questions from the previous topic that we, that we took. So that is what we're going to be doing on Wednesday. That is introduction to the learning management system and how we will use it. Then we'll have a final session, a final rehearsal session on Friday. The final re rehearsal session on Friday I uh, will uh, delve deeper into artificial intelligence and machine learning. That is going to be the second, the second session. And this one is only available for the guys who are going to be part of night school. All right. On Sunday, we'll say to 3,500. I've decided not to do that. So if you want to pay next week, you can pay next week, but you can pay 2,500. But uh, if you pay next week, who's a better chance to access the sessions? So that, that's that's still okay. Now, for the information I've provided with you today, it is free. No one should pay me for anything. It is free. And I'll even, um, the session has been recorded. It's around one hour and 30 minutes. It has been recorded and it's going to be available for you in form of a YouTube link tomorrow. I will make sure I upload it and share it with you. So I hope up to that point, Umejika, a thing or two when it comes to artificial intelligence and machine learning. Give me a thumbs up if you've gotten a thing or two. Yeah, okay. So I'll open the floor for only two questions, two questions, two questions, two questions. And I'll start with, is it Wedigaki? See, it's Wedigaki. I was young, now it's your name. Wedigaki. Felista Gerono. Okay, Otieno Otieno. Joseph Waroinge. Very well. I think to Merada. To Merada, all is good. So yeah, you can be part of night school. Thank you for being part of this session again. I really do appreciate and Asanti Asanti Sana. So get get to get get to understand uh uh, artificial intelligence. It's really going to help you. It's a good sana, my friend. So yeah, if you have any inquiry, you can actually just send me a message on WhatsApp and I'll be very, very sure to help you out in uh, understanding everything about night school. So yeah, thank you and uh, have a good night, guys. We will chat more in uh, my Telegram channel. You can join my Telegram channel. The link to that is in my TikTok bio. If you're already part of it, uh, let me actually just, uh, now, 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 let me just share these particular slides that uh, we just had. Hey, Elvis. Yes, yes. Uh, this is Leslie. Uh, yes, Leslie. Who, uh, I thank you so much for the, for the session today. All right. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this, uh, these slides, will, will, will it be shared on WhatsApp or just uh, on the Telegram channel? I can share them on WhatsApp. See, you are part of the 5 a.m. challenge. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can share them on WhatsApp. Eh? But uh -huh. the best thing is, just go to the channel. Not the channel has that it that it's six thousand members. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just go over there. Uta, yeah. uta ipata apu vizuri sana. People are afraid of of Telegram because of mapitu vitu zina posti yangu apu ivo. Manze, so, unajue, uh, unajue telegram, inambia kila mtu majue telegram. <laughs> ina, ina piga makelele. No worries. Manze, so, but yeah, I've shared the, okay, I've shared the slides on the, on the telegram channel. So you can actually just go read through, sift through, share with your friends. The recordings, the recorded session is going to be available. Good. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I think with that, we are good. Asante. 
So have yourself a good night and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Guys, what is it?